Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to Hidden Gems. In this series I look at games we may have forgotten about over time or ones that potentially slipped under the radar when they were released. In this video I will be looking at SimCity, specifically the version released for the SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So let's learn a little bit more about it. SimCity was originally released for the Amiga and Macintosh in 1989 and later published by Maxis as one of its two initial games and was ported to the SNES in April 1991 in Japan, August 1991 in North America and in September 1992 in Europe. The SNES port was built to follow the Japanese PC version of the game. So what exactly is it? Well, as the name suggests, it is a city simulation game. You are a new mayor to this completely empty area of a map, and you are tasked with building up a town or city as big as you possibly can, the game is effectively open-ended, but the the sort of main goal really is to develop from nothing right up to a megalopolis of 500,000 residents. Now you start off obviously with a tiny little village and you quickly develop this into a town and a city and beyond until you can get up to the megalopolis state. But even when you've done this, the game doesn't end completely. You can keep developing and building and increasing the population and making the town how you see fit uh, beyond that stage. So how exactly do you aim to get 500,000 residents? Well, as the mayor, you are tasked with all of the construction and development of all the different areas. You have to decide how much residential housing area there is, how many um, shops there are in your commercial area, and how much uh, factories there is in your industry. But outside of that, you have to think about the uh, transportation infrastructure, the parklands that are around. You can also build things like stadiums and airports and police departments, fire departments, things like that in order to make your town as habitable as is possible. And obviously the nicer it is and the more of the kind of positive side of things you are enhancing and the negative side of things you are kind of decreasing, things like pollution and crime, that will make more people want to live in your town and as long as there is room for them then your population will grow and grow. Now obviously you have a cash flow to consider as well. Depending on whether you start this off on easy, normal or hard, you get a certain set of funds and with that you then have to kind of build up enough of your town in order to tax the people that live there so that you can keep adding to your pot of money. If you meet certain parameters you will get special presents and one of the things these will do is also give you a yearly bonus and that will add to your pot of money as well. But do bear in mind that you have to pay for things like the police and fire department and for your general upkeep of your town, otherwise things start breaking and you have to then kind of demolish them and rebuild areas, which obviously costs more money in the long run. I have briefly mentioned a couple of the negative elements and these are designed as kind of a challenge for you to overcome so that you can't just blindly build however you like. There are certain parameters that you've got to obviously take into consideration. The bigger your industrial area is, the more likelihood you will have of crime and pollution and you have to combat those with the kind of building of parks trying to make sure that you build high pollution areas well away from where people live and in high crime areas make sure that you've got the necessary police departments around in order to fight that. 
if the traffic in your town is quite high then maybe you want to kind of get rid of some of the roads and use rail instead to get around that sort of a problem as your town grows you will have to kind of tweak the taxes that people are paying partly to keep the ones there happy so that they don't leave and also to attract new people in and as if that isn't enough every now and then you get a few disasters hitting your town things like earthquakes or floods or specifically on the SNES version of the game a monster attack which actually is Bowser replacing kind of a Godzilla like character that was on the original version of the game and he just comes and basically destroys anything he comes into contact with quite a nice little touch for the SNES version of the game now you are not completely on your own you do have the assistance of a kind of a little helper called Dr Wright and he is based on the developer Will Wright and is kind of made within his image and he pops up from time to time to give you advice if uh, the crime rate say is too high or there is a disaster that needs your attention so that you can kind of fix that area up he also gives you kind of just general bits of advice and other bits of praise as well if you're doing something nice and he is the one that offers you certain gifts when you have met certain parameters within the game Alongside him as well, there are sometimes little white boxes at the bottom of the screen that just flash up a little bit of text that might advise you that traffic is quite high or that the citizens demand that their town has a stadium because it's built up to that level. Outside of this version of the game, there is also a scenarios chapter and this comes with various different towns that have their own unique problems maybe the crime is quite high maybe their road infrastructure causes a lot of traffic and you basically have to rebuild certain areas of the town in order to make that problem go away SimCity was initially intended to be an NES release but when it released in early 1991 in Japan the NES was kind of on its way out and the SNES was gaining quite a lot of traction so Nintendo obviously quite wisely wanted to steer potential customers away from the old system and towards the new one so plans for the NES version were completely scrapped. What is interesting is the source code for this game which was originally called Micropolis was released in 2008 under the free software GPL3 license regulations. So what that means is that people can for free pick up that source code and they can adapt it any way they choose to and release it to other users, effectively putting this in the hands of programmers and developers at home to release various different versions of the original version of this game. The only restrictions are really to do with whatever trademarks kind of lay within the EA corporate banner if you like because they have since bought out the Maxis studio so things like the SimCity name obviously is something that is a trademark owned by EA so you're not able to use that name anywhere but as long as you keep away from anything to do with EA and that side of the game, you are free to kind of do as you wish with the game, which hopefully opens it up to quite a few more players. Because although I have managed to find a few copies for around sort of 12, 13 pounds on the internet, there aren't many copies at all. And most of them kind of range up towards the 50 pound mark and in terms of actual physical copies that I have seen in stores and not just from kind of looking on eBay they seem to be fairly difficult to come by just uh, to put that into perspective anyone that has seen my video of when I went to the Norwich gaming market may have seen that there were many many different stalls with lots of NES and SNES games there including sort of Japanese and American imports and I wasn't able to see any copies at all of SimCity 
in any of those stands. It's not to say it wasn't there, maybe it was just eluding me, but they certainly didn't appear to be readily available for people to be picking up. And quite what prices they would have been, probably based on the other things that were on those stands, at least sort of 30 to 40 pounds, I would assume. Outside of this game, it spawned many, many sequels that are still going to this day, mainly on the PC side of things. As I said earlier, that's kind of been picked up by EA. And there have been a few spin-offs as well from SimCity, most notably The Sims, and that is still going very, very strong. Probably actually stronger than the original SimCity series. There we go, they were my thoughts on SimCity for the SNES. If you have any memories of this game yourself, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're able to actually find copies of it, please let everybody know as well in the comments below, because as you can tell, I found it quite difficult. I am very fortunate that I have managed to keep hold of my copy all these years. But until next time, I have been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.